Welcome to Gartex Electronics channel. Today we are going to discuss about Triax, their mode of operation and applications. From our previous tutorial, we discussed about thyristors and their functions. For now, we all know that a thyristor is a semiconductor device that has four layers of alternating PN type materials. This thyristor is used as a fast switching device in both DC and AC circuits. Another important point that we mentioned about thyristors is that a thyristor can only conduct current in only one direction from the anode to the cathode, meaning that it is a unidirectional device. We should also remember that a thyristor has three terminals, that is, 1. The anode which is the positive terminal, 2. The cathode which is negative terminal, 3. The gate which is the control terminal. The gate controls the flow of current between the anode and cathode. In our tutorial today, we shall discuss briefly about one type of thyristors known as a triac. What is a triac? A triac is simply a three-terminal semiconductor device that is able to conduct current in both directions depending on whether the signal that is applied at the gate is positive or negative. In other words, a triac can be triggered into conducting current by both positive and negative voltages applied to its anode and with both positive and negative trigger pulses applied to its gate terminal making it a two-quadrant switching gate control device. One specific use of triac circuits is in light dimmers for domestic lighting, and they are also used in many other power control situations including motor control and other electronic switches. Let me introduce you to some important characteristics of a triac that makes it possible to conduct current in both sides. By now we all agree that thyristors conduct current only in one direction from anode to cathode hence it behaves like a rectifier. This means that, this thyristor conducts only one waveform of AC current. For DC switching circuits this, one-way, switching characteristic of thyristors may be acceptable as once triggered all the DC power is delivered straight to the load. But in sinusoidal AC switching circuits, this unidirectional switching property of a thyristor may be a problem as it only conducts during one half of the cycle just like a half-wave rectifier when the anode is positive irrespective of whatever the gate signal is doing. Then for AC operation only half the power is delivered to the load by a thyristor. Now, in order to obtain full wave power control we can either connect a single thyristor inside a full wave bridge rectifier which triggers on each positive half wave, or we can connect two thyristors together in inverse parallel, back to back, but this increases both the complexity and number of components used in the switching circuit. In order to reduce the complexity and number of components in the circuit, a triac device which is also known as a triode AC switch was designed. This triac is made up of two thyristors connected back to back hence it is a bidirectional switching device thus it's suitable for alternating current conducting. Since the triac conducts in both directions of a sinusoidal waveform, the concept of an anode terminal and a cathode terminal used to identify the main power terminals of a thyristor are replaced with identifications of main terminal 1 and main terminal 2 with the gate terminal referenced as the gate terminal. The main terminal 1 is abbreviated as MT1 and the main terminal 2 is abbreviated as MT2 and the gate terminal is abbreviated as G. Just like a thyristor, we now know that a triac is a four-layer semiconductor device with PNPN in the positive direction and a NPNP in the negative direction. If for example you apply a voltage in the triac which is equivalent to the breakdown voltage, then the triac will go into the conduction state. What do we mean when we say breakdown voltage? A breakdown voltage is simply the minimum voltage required to make the semiconductor device to start conducting current. The most preferred method for switching on a triac is by offering either a positive gate signal or a negative gate signal. Therefore, a triac has four possible triggering modes of operation namely. Mode 1, where main terminal 2 current is positive and gate current is positive. Mode 2, where main terminal 2 current is positive and gate current is negative. Mode 3, where main terminal 2 current is negative and gate current is positive. Mode 4, where main terminal 2 current is negative and gate current is negative. In mode 1, when the gate terminal is made positive with respect to main terminal 1, 
gate current flows through the P2 and N2 junction. When this current flows, the P2 layer is flooded with electrons and further these electrons are diffused to the edge of junction J2, or P2N1 junction. These electrons collected by the N1 layer builds a space charge on the N1 layer. Therefore, more holes from the P1 region are diffused into the N1 region to neutralize the negative space charges. These holes arrive at the junction J2 and produce the positive space charge in the P2 region, which causes more electrons to inject into P2 from N2. This results a positive regeneration and finally the main current flows from main terminal 2 to main terminal 1 through the regions P1N1, P2N2. In the operation mode 2, when main terminal 2 is positive and the gate terminal is negative with respect to main terminal 1, gate current flows through the P2N4 junction. This gate current forward biases the P2N4 junction for auxiliary P1N1, P2N4 structure. This results the triac to conduct initially through the P1N1, P2N4 layers. In triac operation mode 3, main terminal 2 is made negative with respect to main terminal 1 and the device is turned on by applying a positive voltage between the gate and main terminal 1. The turn on is initiated by N2 which acts as a remote gate control and the structure leads to turn on the triac is P2N1, P1N3. The external gate current forward biases the junction P2N2. N2 layer injects the electrons into the P2 layer which are then collected by junction P2N1. This result to increases the current flow through P2N1 junction. This further raises the potential between P2N2 towards the potential of main terminal 2. This causes the current to establish from left to right in the P2 layer which forward biases the junction P2N2. And hence the main structure P1N1, P2N2 begins to conduct. In mode 4, N4 acts as a remote gate and injects the electrons into the P2 region. The external gate current forward biases the junction P2N4. The electrons from the N4 region are collected by the P2N1 junction increase the current across P1N1 junction. Hence the structure P2N1, P1N3 turns on by the regenerative action. The triac is more sensitive in this mode compared with positive gate current in mode 3. We can now conclude that mode 2 and mode 3 are less sensitive configuration which needs more gate current to trigger the triac whereas more common triggering modes of triac are mode 1 and mode 4 which have greater sensitivity. In practice the more sensitive mode of operation is selected such that the polarity of the gate is to match with the polarity of the terminal main terminal 2. I would like to mention that, once the triac has been triggered to conduction state, large current starts flowing through it. Thus it is important to use a current limiting resistor in the circuit in order to protect this triac device. The triac has various applications. Some of the popular applications of the triac are 1. It is used in speed control of single phase AC series or universal motors. 2. A triac is used in food mixers and portable drills. 3. It is used in lamp dimming and heating control. 4. It can be used in zero voltage switched AC relay. 5. Triacs are extensively used at power frequency AC load such as heater, light, motors control applications. In applications where a negative non-insulated power supply is available, the triacs can be controlled with negative voltage. There are different types of triac packages. For the convenience of usage in different applications, the triacs are designed in different packages like pin, standard type, capsule, disc type, and stud type. 1. Pin or standard type. This kind of triac looks like a tiny integrated circuit through three terminals like the main terminal 1, main terminal 2 and gate, and a heat sink on the pinnacle. These triacs are mainly utilized in household electronic appliances. The common packages of standard type triac include TMA36SL, TMA54SL, TMA124SL, TMA84SL, TMA126SL, 
TMA-106SL, TMA-206SL, etc. 2. Capsule or disc type. The capsule or disc type triax will be in the disc shape through extensive wires toward the terminals. These types of triax have a high current capacity and are designed through a ceramic seal. The applications of capsule or disc type include fast controlling of a motor as well as AC switching. The common capsule type packages are KS200A, KS100A, KS500A, KS300A, KS600A, KS1000A, and also KS800A. 3. Stud type. The stud type triac is mainly used within high power applications because they include a screwed bottom to perform like the main terminals and includes two terminals on its summit which are the other major terminal as well as the gate terminal. These are mainly used within the phase control applications like lighting circuits, converter, RPS, speed control and temperature of circuits, etc. The packages of stud type triac include T093, T0118, T094, T048, RSD7 and T065. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Please like, comment, share and subscribe to this channel for more video updates. Bye.